Hello, I'm B.A. Norman. You know, when I was 15 years old, I was an atheist. And that's because I was taught and I believed that somehow science had disproven the Bible. That uh, the, the earth really wasn't 6,000 years old. That God didn't really create in six days. That evolution really did happen. I thought that science had proven those things. And later, of course, I realized those things aren't true at all. Science has not proven those things at all. To the contrary, the scientific evidence we have today does suggest a very young Earth. It suggests that dinosaurs did live with people and so forth. And so what I've done now as a father and as a high school teacher is I've written, started to write, a series of books called the Early Earth Series. And in these books I tell a fun story about four young people who go back in time to life on Earth before the flood and there they encounter dinosaurs living with people. They find giants, they come into contact with a dragon, and all the fun elements of fantasy fiction are in these books. But instead of the kind of books we have today where sorcery is encouraged and where kids summoning demons happens, these books are written from a biblical foundation where they're suitable for the entire family and anybody, kid or adult, can enjoy these books. They can get into a fun story. They can learn about life on Earth before the flood from the eyes of a modern day person who goes back in time and gets just as surprised by these things as we the readers do. So if you know of somebody, or if you are somebody who would like a book like that, I suggest you pick up a book from the Early Earth series. To order this book, visit us at creationstore.org. Eric Hoban here from creationtoday.org. If you missed our show on religion and science, are they compatible? You missed a great interview with Brian and Virginia Norman. You need to go back and watch that. I want to take some time right now to just talk about you guys' ministry. Uh, I am blown away that we've got a theologian and a scientist married compatibly. It's working. Isn't that amazing? It is. Okay, first of all, tell us real quick about your ministry, Early Earth Educators. You've written two books already. I'm blown away at the success you guys have seen. Tell me about your ministry. I just want to hear about this. Well, Early Earth Educators, our tagline is that the Bible and science agree. As you pointed out, I'm a theologian. I have a master's degree in divinity. My wife is a theologian. Not a theologian. She's a, my wife is a scientist. <laughs> That's the one. And she, and she has a master's degree in geology. And of, of all the fields of science, people think contradict the Bible. They think geology does yes. a lot, that the Earth is billions of years old, and everybody knows that. Everybody's already proven that. What are, you what are we talking about it for? Well, that's not true at all. Scientifically, and she can tell you this better than I can, science has not proven the Earth is billions of years old. Far from it. The evidence actually shows to the contrary. The Earth is actually quite young, not old. And now, so, now, i got to stop right there. But, I found this fascinating. You did your thesis in radiometric dating. Mm -hmm. In radiometric dating, yeah. my uh, I defended a thesis that I did basically age dating rocks using, this is nerd stuff, potassium argon system. And... Um, I defended it successfully, they gave me a degree, but <laughs> as time went on and I started learning more about creation and young earth creationism, and started looking back at radiometric dating, there are so many assumptions that I made to wow. come up with those age dates, and I don't believe it's reliable. Wow, coming then, from the scientist. That's fascinating. And many of the <laughs> many of the results were thrown out because they didn't match. What oh, they that's were another thing. To. This is like the this is a dirty little secret when you have a data set. You know, here's where you want all of my uh, secret time. I know. Let's go. <laughs> I want to hear this. All right. If you have a data set and you know most of your data falls within a certain range and you have some outliers, you just throw them out. Just get rid of those. Just Obviously, something went wrong. You know, and that's okay. Wrong. That's accepted practice. We just need to be forthright about that we've done that in our modeling or whatever. So, and wow. I, I did the same. I had outliers in my data with the dating that I did not use in my model. So, Man. so she's got the science. Right. You got the theology. Yes, sir. And together, you guys got the early earth educators ministry and educating people. And we have agreement, and that's what we like to say is that the Bible and science agree. <laughs> and you know. Most people can't get into deep science like Virginia can. I mean, I can't. I'm not a scientist, but I like to point out to people, just normal average people who are confused about this issue, that you don't have to be a scientist to understand what science can do and what science cannot do. Great There's point. a lot of things that science simply cannot do. Science cannot prove the existence of God, nor can it prove the non-existence of God. You can't do that. You can't prove if there's a soul scientifically or if 
if, if, if anything in the non-physical realm even exists. Science can't touch that stuff. Science is within its own box. It can do what it does, and it does it very well. But it can't address issues of religion. Mm. And so when we hear people talk about the earth being billions of years old, or there being no God, or us having supposedly evolved, they're not telling us science when they say those things. They're saying nothing about science, but they're saying a lot about their religious view. Their religious viewpoint, which is a secular, humanistic, atheistic often yeah. viewpoint, is that we did not come from God, we came from ourselves. The universe did not come from God, it came out of itself. This is all religion. This is a philosophical belief system, <laughs> yeah. and it's not science. And so what we like to show people is that Hey, you have freedom of religion. You can believe whatever you want, but just please understand what it is. That's religion that you're talking about. It's well, not science. Why don't they want to admit that? I, I, um, if, go ahead. Well, I, I think right down at the base of it, if you don't accept, like people don't want to accept God. Why don't Why don't people accept? You know, um, is that what I said? It's It's them being their it? own master. You right. know, you either submit to the God of the universe who created you, mm -hmm. and if you don't want to do that. <laughs> you need to find some other thing to believe. Well, I'm my own master because, you know, mm -hmm. I'm here by accident. I'm here, I'm a right. product of evolution. Right. I'm a product of the universe creating itself. In, so, in, in humanism, I don't need God. <laughs> in humanism, we get to be God. I think that's ultimately it. Most people won't admit that. But in reality, you know, it's the same lie right back to the garden. You can be like God. Wow. And if there is no God above me telling me what to do, if I'm the highest evolved life form. And if all morality is based on my interpretation of what I feel is right, what I choose to make right, then I'm my own God. Absolutely. And and that's That's pretty appealing it's if appealing you think about to it a from, lot from of a people. humanistic perspective. If if you don't want to submit to the God of the universe, then you want to have another answer. And, and and that's the thing, is that when you ask somebody a question, where did we come from? Why are we here? Those basic life questions. Nobody can prove those things scientifically. That comes down to a religious, philosophical mindset when a person answers those questions. Why am I here? Why is anything here? What mm -hmm. is my purpose in life? Where am I going to go when I die? Those are questions that can't be answered by science. They right. can only be answered by a religious viewpoint. A philosophical viewpoint. Exactly. Okay, so you guys are married, professors, you guys are in the field, you're working, you travel and speak on creation versus evolution, you're writing books. I, and I got to ask you about those in just a minute because these are fascinating. Your approach you. here uh, on the books. Um, what what all do you hope that your ministry can accomplish in strengthening the faith of believers, winning the lost of Christ, letting people see the truth, and then maybe I'd love to hear kind of your background because you shared with me the school you went to and some of the stuff you had learned at the time. Right. I I was an atheist. I was really an agnostic, but I argued like I was an atheist for a number of years. And uh, I didn't really become a Christian until I was 15 years old. And, uh, and at that point, I switched schools. I switched from public school to, to a Christian high school. And uh, I learned a lot. But one thing I did not learn uh, was, the, was the creation message of a literal, literal six-day creation about 6,000 years ago, that evolution is not true. That's just a belief system that's not been proved by science. I did not learn any of that stuff when I was a teenager. I did not learn those things until six years after I became a Christian and I, was, and I went to an Answers in Genesis conference and I heard Ken Ham speak and read one of his books and then I became a believer in that. And, and what I found was even, it disturbed me because even a lot of Christians, well-intentioned Bible-believing Christians did not believe that, do not believe that. And I think it's because they've accepted a false premise. They've accepted the false premise that science has somehow proven that the earth is billions of years old. Science has proven no such thing. In fact, the evidence is on our side that it's not that old. Yeah. Science has not proven that we evolved. On the contrary, the theory of evolution is a very bad theory. Just leaving the Bible aside for a moment, just scientifically, the theory of evolution is a very bad, bad theory. And she can tell you more reasons why if you want to ask her. <laughs> it's a terrible theory. But it's a terrible, <laughs> there's a lot of better reasons. There's a lot of reasons. There, there's a lot of reasons. But, but I, I was never taught those things as a teenager. And now as a, as, a, as a high school teacher and as a father of teenagers, I really have a heart for these young people who are hearing you know, evolution taught as if it's fact in their biology classes, evolution being taught on all these TV programs as if it's fact and it's not fact. And you know, the Bible, of course, is being left out of most public schools, all public schools, and in some cases, even some Christian schools too much. Mm -hmm. 
And so they're not getting the word of God. They're getting a false religion, frankly, in their classrooms, in their textbooks, and on the TV shows they watch. And so my heart is to reach out to people who would not necessarily go to a creation seminar like I did, who might not watch this show, uh, people who, who you know, might not even go to church, but they would pick up a fun fantasy fiction adventurous novel. And so for the people who will read Harry Potter and enjoy it, for the people who will read Chronicles of Narnia and enjoy it, for the people who read Twilight and stuff like that, I want to reach those people. So I have a fantasy fiction series here. I'm on book two. I love this. Your approach, I think, is is genius from the level of Thank you. you have a book that has tons of theology and tons of science in it, and people reading it don't even realize that when, at first when they're first starting to read it. I hope not, because I want they're, them to get hooked into a good story. <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. So the storyline provides these right. things. Oh, man. Right. So as, as they identify with the characters, mm -hmm. they're learning about young earth creationism. Basically, the stories are about four young people who go back in time to life on Earth before the flood. Now, these are modern people who see through the lenses that the reader sees through. And so they're, they're seeing dinosaurs coexisting with human beings. Well, how can this be? Well, right. you find out as the story unfolds how that can be. And they see people living to be 600, 700, 800, 900 years old. How can this be? Well, they find out how that could have been back then on life on Earth before the flood. It can't be true now, right. but it could be. It, it, it was true then. Well, how? Well, they find out as they read. What are the Nephilim? Well, they find out what the Nephilim could in fact have been as they read these books. So there's dinosaurs, there's giants, there's battle, there's action, there's all the stuff that readers of fantasy and adventure like to read about. There's a dragon. And, and I address these things from a biblical standpoint while telling a fun story. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Are, is it possible to write a fiction book without having all kinds of negative, uh, ungodly romance and right. demons? And, right. and you tell me, so it's possible. It's possible. And, and, that's, and that's, my heart goes out to those people yes. because, because stu you know, kids are reading books about how sorcery is good, yeah. how romantic relationships with vampires is good. Kids killing kids is, is acceptable practice, I guess, in some of these books. Um, you know, I just read a book the other day about a kid who's summoning demons. Wow. And these books are winning awards, wow. children's book awards. And they're number one time, you know, the New York Times number one bestsellers. I hate that. I want the kids, and by kids I mean 12 and up. Really, I'm writing these for things for teenagers, high school students, middle school students, college students and above especially, who are hearing the lies of evolution being taught as if they're truth, the lies of an old earth being taught as if it's true, the you know, complete elimination of God from our society as if that's normal. And I want them to have another alternative, something good to read where they can learn biblical truth and have fun doing it. Amen. I got to tell you, I took this to the Answers in Genesis mega conference last week, because this week you just now are bringing me book two and it wasn't out yet. People looked at this on the table, read the back cover, and said, I want one of those. Awesome. I mean, it was just, it's just the title makes it, Early Earth makes it fascinating to go, yeah, what was that like? And here you get to go into, you know, science and, and theology and fiction and combine it all together. So, great job, by the way. It's fun. It makes me feel good because uh, uh, a kid I know at my church, he's 15 years old, he said, you know, I never read anything unless I have to. And, and uh, you know, I, and I, I have several students like that, right? And he said, but I read your book, re referencing book one, I read your book three times. Wow. I'm like, <laughs> really? Wow, well, that, and that's, that's what really I want. I want the person, yeah, I want those people who, again, might not attend an Answers in Genesis conference, but want to know the truth and want to have something fun to read, to read these books, enjoy them, and learn the truth, and be able to share it with others. And ultimately, it's about getting them to know Jesus. That's exactly so, right. And that's where the theology has to come out, where you're going. The whole point is to get them to the cross, right? That's the point. That's yeah. the point. It may not be obvious at first. But I don't really even want it obvious at first because I want people who might not pick up Christian literature to pick this up and read it like they would any other book. And then hopefully, as they keep on reading, come to realize that A, the Bible and science agree, mm. and B, I can trust that Savior. I can trust the Creator. Amen to that. Wow. Wow, guys, this is so cool. Okay, so here we have, like we said, a theologian and a scientist. They are married to each other. It's working out just fine. Working it's out working great. out better than just fine. <laughs> it's awesome. Amen. There's no conflict between the Bible and science. Amen to that. All right, real quick. Here's your shot at evolution because you were taught it. You brought up with it. 
Take a couple of shots. Take just kind of give, shots us some, give us a little one-two there on evolution. Okay. One of the biggest problems I found with the theory of evolution, and I told this to my, I get to teach this to the students in my classroom yeah. too, which is amazing. Um, they are, evolutionists propose that, you know, we've got this family tree that goes from, you know, some original life form all the way up to us with all of these branches and common ancestors. And, and you know, back in the beginning of the theory, you know, Darwin himself, you know, said that there should be these transitional forms in the rock record. We should be able to see common ancestors in transitional forms that led from one species to another and be able to fill in that tree. And they're not there. We've had 200 years of geology looking, for looking at fossils. The transitional forms aren't there. Furthermore, there are species existing side by side, and one is supposed to be more advanced than the other. So, you know, if we came from monkeys, there are plenty of monkeys, you know. Yeah. If we, if all life came from, you know, bacteria, believe me, there are plenty of bacteria. Of so, and the other thing that I have a problem with is just the complexity of life that we look at. If you look at a single-celled organism, even the simplest bacteria you can find, the cell membrane on that creature is incredibly complex. The machinery inside that creature, its DNA, is incredibly complex. There's no way that could step piecewise and come into existence. Oh. It's mathematically impossible. <laughs> so you're a science teacher, you've done science, and you're saying you disagree with Darwinian evolution. You're going I, on record. I am on record saying Darwinian <laughs> evolution is terrible. Wow. That's wrong. Wow. <laughs> so science and evolution do not go together. They're not compatible. <laughs> science and scripture, compatible. 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 <laughs> Every single time. Wow. When God reveals himself, he doesn't contradict himself. When God reveals himself through scripture, that's special revelation. When God reveals himself through science, that's a general revelation. Yeah. And uh, it's amazing. <laughs> it's, yes. it's I, I'm amazing. not a scientist. Maybe she can correct my definition here. But I think science at its most basic definition is an exploration of God's creation. It's a tool that we use right. to understand general revelation. Mm -hmm. yeah. that's, that's beautiful. So, the reason science has, you said at the beginning, has this box that it has to stay inside right. and they can't allow the supernatural. So based on that understanding, of course they're never going to conclude God because right. they don't start with him inside. They excluded yeah. him from the box. Right. And so their box will never conclude God, but it's because that's the definition, that's the starting point. Right. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with that. We just have to... What, what I have a problem with, there's nothing wrong with saying scientifically we're looking at observable, repeatable, that's fine. That's operational science and every good Christian can do that if they want to, there's no problem there. What I have a problem with is when scientists bring stuff in from outside the box and say it's science, you know, when we want to start modeling, you know, Big Bang or evolution or something like that, <coughs> we can't investigate it in a lab, we can't, right. you know, right. we can't observe it. Um, I've, we've heard evolutionists on some of the materials we have at home talk about, well, we can't actually observe evolution because it takes millions of years. Well, there it's not, it's it's not, not in the realm of operational science. I mean, it's fine to theorize, but be honest about what you're doing. Right. Be and honest about the fact that it's not operational science. Don't you wish they would just be honest with this? It seems like there is an agenda right. to try to get people to push, push, push. Our whole education system is based on that agenda. Yeah. And you go, hang on, what's really going on? And as a parent and as a teacher, I think it's tragic because they're not, <clears throat> the students are not getting the information, they're not getting an honest answer. You know, when the, when the late Carl Sagan said in his Cosmos series, for example, the cosmos is all there ever was, all there is, and all there ever will be. That is not a scientific statement. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a bald-faced religious statement. That's, wow. that's his atheism. But he put that right, you know, in the middle of his yeah. science program. Now, much of the science, he said, was probably accurate. But inserted in the middle of that was that very blatant, to us anyway, blatant religious statement. But it's not blatantly obvious. Now, to is your people. average viewer going to be able to look at something like that and think about it, you know, critically enough to say, okay, science, that's religious, that's science, that's religion, that's science. Right. Most people don't view things like that. Well, well, I love that you guys are out there in the field doing the work and then also doing the ministry aspect. You guys are doing both, burning the candles at both ends. You're going to get <laughs> twice the light, right? And uh, I love the fact, I mean, I know the work that goes right here. We talked about the hours spent. 
Oh my goodness. And for people to get that many hours of your life in two books uh, is just... It takes time, but I, I want to leave a legacy. I really want people to, you know, to gain what I gained because for so many years I didn't have this. Back when I was an agnostic, what I was really looking for, this is back before I was 15 years old, what I was really looking for was um, proof that the Bible was real. I would ask people, can you, can you prove that the Bible is real? Well, no, they couldn't really. And, and, I, and, and I thought that science had disproven the Bible. That's what I had been taught through the public school system. I had been taught that evolution was true, that the earth is billions of years old, that that creation story in Genesis is just a story, you know, a nice, nice fable. And so I thought mistakenly that science had already disproven the Bible. And so I was going toward atheism. And, you know, God got a hold of me, obviously. And later on, I learned that's not true at all. So I want to get that message out to as many people as possible. And I'm writing as a target audience those people, the middle schoolers, the high schoolers, the college age people who are getting fed the lies of evolution through what is supposedly a science curriculum. Right. And I want them to realize there's, there's a lot more to this that you're not being told yet. And, and what's, what's fun, by the way, as, I get, as the reviews are coming in, so far, Early Earth Book 1 has all five-star reviews on Amazon. Nice. Book 2 just came out. It has no reviews yet. <laughs> but, uh, but some of those reviews, surprisingly, are coming from people who are older than me, actually. Whoa. Maybe they had the same public school experience I had. I don't know. <laughs> sure but uh, but it's, it's not just for teenagers. That's, that's who my heart is for. It's for this next generation. This generation where when they go off to college, 70 to 75% walk away from the church. And, and I can see why. If they're being taught that science has disproven the Bible. But it hasn't. Science is great. It's a God thing. The Bible is a God thing. And they completely harmoniously agree with each other. And that's what I want people to get. The husband-wife team, Brian and Virginia Norman, teaching on the truth of creation in their books, traveling and speaking. If they want to get a hold of you, earlierthededucators.com. That's exactly right. Dot com. Earlierthededucators.com. And like us on Facebook at yeah. Early Earth Educators. We, a great way to get just be able to just easy contact mm -hmm. is Facebook. Yeah. Facebook is great, and and also we can go a little bit deeper on Facebook for those who want to, you know, read more articles, find out more things about creation, evolution, the age of the Earth, dinosaurs, the things we like to talk it about. Updates faster. It, yes. it, it updates faster <laughs> than the books. Yes, the books <laughs> take a while. But we post a lot of things on our Facebook page, Early Earth Educators, as well. And traveling and speaking. I mean, I know you guys also teach, so I know that you're a little bit limited on how far you can go and how long you can stay. But, man, to get you in to actually come and teach on this stuff and actually give the science, give the theology behind it is just wonderful. That's what we love to do. We love to go to churches and schools, anybody who will take us so that we can get that creation message out. So anybody who would like to listen to us, we would love to talk to if we can fit it into, into our schedules, yeah. like you said. Hey, find them on Facebook, share them, share their ministry with others. Get out there and do something that's going to matter for eternity. So, conclusion, science and the Bible, Always compatible. Always Absolutely agree. compatible. Evolution and science, no. incompatible. <laughs> doesn't work, doesn't work. Hey, thanks for joining us. If, again, you missed the show that we got to have on Is the, Sci is, uh, the Bible and Science Compatible, you need to go to creationtoday.org and check that out under the Creation Today shows in season number four. Thanks for joining us today. God bless.